Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome and uh, happy day after Christmas. And joining me the day after Christmas here, Chris Williams. Hey, Chris. How are you? Hey, good to be here. And Mark Cameron. Hey, Steve. Hey, Chris. Happy Boxing Day for any yep. other Brits out there listening. <laughs> yes, now, what, is, what does Boxing Day refer to? Boxing Day is uh, traditionally was the day after Christmas when the servants and the poor people got to celebrate Christmas. Oh, yeah. that's just weird. It's strange. <laughs> <laughs> but not everything that you Brits do is weird and strange. Hey, no. You know? so. Some. Okay, so, you know, we could talk about how uh, disappointing Christmas might be. We could talk about spending money you didn't have. All the downer stuff that we could talk about, conflict. But how about this? Some people had the best Christmas they've had in years. Mm -hmm. They had a connection deeper, richer than they've had in years because this past year they did some work. And they got their act together, or the couple got their act together, or the kids were provided treatment, and they responded and got better. I mean, for many people, this was a great Christmas. And I got to tell you this, I don't know what it's going to be like for us, because this is a tape program, but I think it's going to be one of the best ever. I've never seen our kids in such good shape as right now. And I hope and pray that that's the same for all of you. To that end, you know, if it wasn't good, what do you guys think would be a really great first step to get to have the best Christmas ever next year? What do you think? Well, if it wasn't good, um, and, and if that was down to you, then I think uh, learning to repair. Right. Whenever we have repair. rupture, Big word. we need to have repair. And yeah. uh, Christmas is traditionally a time for goodwill to old men, all, all, all men. And I think mm -hmm. there is a lot of goodwill out there. And mm -hmm. so it's learning to create some of that. Um, and if you've messed up, own it and go and repair. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not a car mechanic, but I think my wife would say I'm better at repairing cars mm -hmm. than ruptures. And it's always something that I have to work on, get better and better at the repair. And I think that's the way it is with most of us guys. We really need to work on repair because we do one of two things. We power down or up mm -hmm. or we wimp out and play like a baby and weep and moan or isolate. And neither of those are good extremes. Yeah, and I think that this is the, that time of year that we've created hopefully a natural rhythm, at least a cultural rhythm, that we have the celebration and the togetherness of Christmas. And then we quickly transition into the new year, which mm -hmm. is the, the time of resolution. But I do think this, the, the best and worst moment of my life was the same moment. And it was this, I discovered the problem with the world. It was me. I was the biggest problem in my world. That was a terrifying moment when the reality of that hit in. It was the best moment because that was the only thing I could do anything about. I can't do anything about everyone else. And so if you had a really tough, a really challenging, really painful maybe Christmas, know that if you take ownership on your side of what you can do and then do the things that you need to do to repair with others, but to repair maybe what things are going on inside of you, that need addressed. Yep. And, and 2024 is a year to do it. It is. And it's a great year to stop waiting for God to do what God has been waiting for you to do. You can wait to be delivered from something, or you could deliver yourself to a meeting and go to work on you. 
It had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day, every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal. They're just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. The Everyman's Battle Intensive can help. After seven years, he just in one weekend came back. I completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Everyman's Battle Intensive. He said this is something that every man to go to, married, dating, it was definitely life-changing. Now the intensive is coming to Washington, D.C., January 12th to the 14th. Don't wait for him to call. To find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. I just can't say enough of what New Life has done for our marriage. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We have been listening probably since 2003. It has been our go-to for marital issues, personal recovery issues, parenting issues. It's reassuring that there's nothing that we're going through that someone else hasn't already survived. Just a little bit goes a long way if we come together as a body to support programming and services that really end up benefiting us in the long run. I love that. And, you know, we, we believe that this is a unique program because we're live. We connect with people um, face-to-face or ear-to-ear, and we have kind of a a great idea of what's really going on out there not what we thought was going on and i hope you'll help us stay in touch with folks and continue to provide hope for some of these really really tough places we get into and if you can it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE or newlife.com or you could just uh, text the word match because we do have a two hundred thousand dollar matching fund you text MATCH to 28950, 28950, and tell them how much you can give. And um, we are grateful, so grateful when you do. We want to be doing this 35 years from now. I will not be doing this 35 years from now, but somebody will be better than me, and that's what we want to see. All right, let's go to the phones, and uh, if you want to join us, one 800 229 and uh, let's go to, well, we'll go to Carissa, Houston, Texas. Sirius XM is the station. Hi, Carissa. How are you today, and how could we help? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. What's going on? So I was calling in today. Um, me and my family are having some issues with uh, my brother. It's been going on for quite a while. He lives a lifestyle. Um, he's a, a methamphetamine user. And he's also a paraplegic. And so um, I was woke up this morning with a call um, that he's in the hospital because he'd been beaten with a hammer from some guys that have been harassing him. So um, I've also, our my oldest sister has also been um, lost to this lifestyle as well. We lost her back in 2012 due to um, her contract in AIDS and it turned to HIV and then she's passed away. So. Um, it's definitely been a battle for our family. My mom, she's definitely a she definitely um, is a is a Christian woman, and as a mother myself, it's kind of hard at times to to see what she's going through and to see her her strength, as in knowing that she she can just pray for him, but there's only so much that she can do. And so I'm trying to find out exactly what resources th- does me and my family have to be able to help him because we cannot take on him and his lifestyle. And, and, and incorporated into our home. Now, how, who so does he I live with? Who, him from afar. Who, okay, who does he live with? He stays in a in, in a kind of piece together camper, an RV uh-huh. camper by himself. Yes, sir. Him and his dog. Okay, and so uh, is he going to be able to do that now since he's been beaten with a <laughs> hammer? Um, as far as I know, he's. He's 
he's there. Um, they released him to, the, to his back to his home. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm currently at work right now. I'm supposed to go by there and check on him as soon as I'm done. Okay. And um, he has a broken thumb, but he hasn't said that he's not able to to still care for himself right now. But he's he's still living in the area where the, where the people live. They still they've come by. Okay harassing him um he's called i've asked him why hasn't the cops been called he said that they'll just retaliate even worse okay all right so the main thing is you don't have to take him in right he can still be independent yes sir so the questions you're asking about caring for him what what do they refer to what you say to him or or what what are you talking about in your care Just for how him. do we go about things exactly? He feels like um, he feels. I've tried to talk to him about the Lord about things, and and he just feels like the Lord obviously is upset with him or hates him or something. Because why would he be paralyzed and go through all that he's gone mm-hmm. through over the years? Yeah. Um, so so how about we prison. how about we help him with meth first? Right. That's where I'm trying to and, get at. Like um, that that problem needs to be addressed because it doesn't matter what resources we may provide him. Um, either another place to stay, he's just going to bring that same lifestyle and still continue to have problems. Yeah. So, so, so Carissa, he's not living a lifestyle. He's deep into a life-threatening medical condition. Yes, sir. And, and so I, I just want to clarify that a little bit, because don't get me wrong, it is a lifestyle, and he's adapted, yeah. and, and his medical condition, known as addiction, on top of his yeah. other medical conditions, are... Are lethal. They're they're really they're really severe, and so, you know, if, if he was in stage four cancer, you probably I mean you definitely would want to talk to him about God, but you wouldn't look at talking to him about God as a solution for the cancer necessarily. I mean, of course God can heal, but you get where I'm going here. Yeah. And so, what you want to be able to do, and this is really really hard because people who um, are addicted to methamphetamine and it tend to be very, very, very resistant to recovery and can also have yes. a lot of paranoia as well. Yes. But what I would do is saying like, hey, we will do anything possible with, within our ability, like we got to stay within our ability to help you get the help you need because you're exactly right. You are a terrible treatment option for him, you know, and, yeah. and so getting him or trying to connect him to resources and I what I would be praying for for him is a readiness to get help a readiness to get out of his situation readiness to accept the fact that there is another option for him if he can get into a treatment program he can that has good medical care as well as addictive care and recovery care that that would by far and away be the best option yeah, and you, you know his choices, his choices have brought him to this point in his life, right? Yes. He's True. chosen to use meth. He's not chosen to get help. He's chosen to alienate himself further from God rather than believe that God could love him. And so sometimes the best thing we can do for someone is to tell them. When you change your choices, then your life is going to change. And for them to see that they're not in that situation because of bad luck or something, but they've made some crummy choices. And so you want to inspire or uh, motivate him to make better choices. How do you do that? Well, you tell him what the better choices are. Rather than to use meth, it would be better to join some people who used to use meth and talk about what it's like to be free of using meth before you get in deeper trouble. There are a lot of people that are in prison for a year or two because they got caught making or using meth. It's illegal. And you can really get in big trouble big trouble so you want to help him find some new better choices by knowing what those are go ahead carissa was your brother born paraplegic or did something happen no he was in a wreck 
Mm-hmm. He was out of, to, out of state working, and he had gotten a wreck, and um, he was ejected from the vehicle. How and long? And he, had, he actually had passed away, but they had brought him back. Oh, wow. How long ago was that? This was 17 years ago. Oh, wow. So it's been a while that he's been living in this body. And was there other things that happened yeah. during childhood? I mean, you mentioned that your older sister was, I think, a meth addict, too. Um, yeah, yes. Um, for him, his father wasn't in the picture. Um, mm-hmm. He was an abusive father. My mother had mm-hmm. um, divorced his father years ago when he was still young. Um, he had broke his leg or his arm. So he'd been ab- abused by his mm-hmm. father. Then his father wasn't present in his life and then later in the years his father ended up passing away um so just lack of father and just getting into the wrong crowd he he had been to prison for about nine Mm -hmm. years whenever i was younger about 10 years old he had went away for a while for um, robberies and stuff so Mm. that so there's a lot of pain her anger um you in you you know the childhood that you and your siblings share and then you know with your brother too you know in that accident um and so, I mean, we know with addiction, right, there's always something that's underneath that. Um, but so yeah. I, I think you're doing the right thing here with, you know, I hear you when you, you were talking earlier about having this healthy separation, this healthy detachment and knowing that you can't, you know, take on his recovery for him. And so you're kind of like in this kind of waiting situation where um, you need him to be able to see that he is is so desperate enough that he needs the recovery and so i think you just kind of stay on the periphery there of keep giving those messages of i love you i'm here for you let me know when you're ready because i think there's there are things out there for folks Mm -hmm. who want recovery though you know they'll they'll find a way and sometimes i wonder maybe with his mentality from the drug use and the chemicals and stuff is he doesn't maybe think properly. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, and so it kind of, it makes it hard for, you know, the right choices to be made or to mm-hmm, see something mm-hmm. a normal way. That's, you know, yeah. the way it's supposed to be. And that's why what you say to him is really important that you're yeah. able to tell him, here's a better choice that you may not be aware of that people really enjoy life when they get in a recovery group. They really enjoy connecting with people. And right now, I'm sure that you don't feel like connecting with people. That's normal. But once you start connecting, you look forward to that. It fills that vacuum that's caused by a father. It fills that emptiness that's caused by a lifelong injury. It fills that need for a a high that you get from meth by connecting with and experiencing some kind of relationship that's deeper than you've ever had with another human being with no uh, sexual goal at the end. So you want to be able to talk with him about that because, you know, the opposite of those kind of good things to share with him is that you start to enable the evil that's, that's rotting his soul. Because that's really what's happening here. We're watching yeah. a human being just kind of rot away using meth, yeah. being bitter, alienated from other people, and for yeah. some reason, he's gotten involved with some people that really don't like him. Yeah. Beat him with a hammer. How do you think that happened? So, and, and as you have these conversations with him, ask, don't tell. You know, rather yeah. than telling him what he needs to do, I would ask these questions like, aren't you tired of living this way? Aren't you, you know, don't, don't you want something more? Because people, you know, if you can kind of present it in that way that he can kind of consider and cause that discrepancy, people are more likely to follow their own ideas than they mm-hmm. are others, right? So just yeah. keep, keep being yeah, that light, right. keep planting the seed that way. And then it will feel more like uh, for you too, less exhausting, you know, rather than you're telling him what to do and he's not doing it and you're frustrated. You're just more asking these thoughtful questions. You know, um, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, I'm going to send you healing as a choice because it can help him see that there are choices 
They're laid out there. They're all healing choices. But I'll send you a life recovery Bible. I'll send you two of them. And a workbook. Two workbooks. And maybe over the phone, you could engage him in reading that life recovery Bible together and working through the workbook one step at a time. That's what I'll do for you. But I hope and pray that you could find the treatment resources available. Usually there is treatment available for folks who can't afford it and that you'd help them get into it. Also, we do emotional freedom and that would be a great, great experience for him to deal with some of this residual bitterness, anger, alienation, and need for methamphetamines. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. 1-800-229-3000. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn. And when Jesus has your heart, your heart changes. And often it changes the way we view money. Jesus had dinner with a little guy named Zacchaeus. And all of a sudden, this man obsessed with money wanted to give half of everything he had to the poor. And those he cheated give them four times as much as he had taken. You see, he wasn't worried about giving too much. He was worried about doing the right thing. I don't know of anybody who's ever given too much. As much as we give, we receive right back in blessings. Please help us here at Year End. To make your tax-deductible gift, visit newlife.com and click Donate. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or text NLM to 28950. That's NLM to 28950. I've been listening to New Life for many years, I've gone to a few workshops. I want to support a ministry that helps people connect with God and with others and gives them the tools to help transform their lives. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, We'll send you the new member thank you gift of all eight 100-day devotionals, including 100 Days of Healing, 100 Days from Freedom from Shame, and 100 Days of Freedom from Anger. There are also ongoing benefits like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, discounts on workshops, and quarterly online meetings with Steve. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back and uh, hope and pray that you've had a great Christmas. Now, year end is right here. And what you give has everything to do with what we can do in the next year. And I hope and pray that you could support us here at year end. You can send your gift to, by say, sending the word MATCH to 28950. 28950, the word MATCH. Give them the amount. You can call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, or you can go to newlife.com. And I just hope and pray that you could do that. We've got a few days to end this year well, and it can make all the difference in the world for next year. Also, um, we've got some workshops coming up in January. Every Man's Battle is the 12th of January. Lose It for Life is the 27th of January. Intimacy and Marriage, February 16th, Restore, February 23, and Emotional Freedom, March 16th. All right, 1-800-NEW-LIFE or um, newlife.com to find out more about what we're doing there. And now let's go back to the phones. Let's talk to Carol, Austin, Texas, and she listens to us on the podcast. So, hi, how are you today? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Certainly. How can we help today? Yeah, I have a question. Um, My daughter-in-law struggles with mental illness. Um, How old is she? she? She's 25 years old. 
How long has she been your daughter-in-law? For six years. Six years, okay. Yeah. She um, has actually self-diagnosed herself with OCD, panic attacks, anxiety disorder. She now thinks she has uh, autism, um, and she's never seen a psychiatrist to confirm her condition. She um, she doesn't she has a fear of, of doctors in general, and um, she doesn't think anybody can help. Um, she also suffers from chronic pain. She claims she has some childhood trauma, and most recently she has self diagnosed herself with pathological demand avoidance. Okay, so, so her, here's a question she, for you. Yeah. Why does your son allow her to have these problems and not get mm-hmm. help for those problems? That, that's exactly what the question I have, and he has, is he, he has researched doctors. Um, he has encouraged her. He has set up appointments, but, you know, she doesn't go. She's afraid. And the, the one more thing about her history is she has a family history of bipolar. Um, her grandmother had bipolar and her, fa- her brother had bipolar. And um, he actually killed himself. Um, okay. So, but the big headline here isn't all the stuff that she has going on. Right. The headline is she's not getting help and right. no one is forcing her. To get help, which is going to have to happen. Uh, okay. Chris, Mark, yeah. what are you thinking? How, do, how does this young man and this mother-in-law get her the help that she must have? I mean, she's sitting here obsessing over all of her problems, making them work. Yeah, so uh, it's interesting that she's self-diagnosing without the eight years it requires to go through medical school to make those diagnoses. Um, right. Right. And so, uh, obviously, Google is her enemy, but she, she's really, really trapped inside of herself in a very, very painful way. Mm-hmm. That Everyone else is coming up with her solutions for her except for her. And notice right. that it, you're going to go mad, right? You're just going to go crazy trying to think, trying to do all of her work for her. Mm-hmm. And so we want to look at this as if she is addicted to her problems, Mm -hmm. Right. And it's going to take her to do something about that. So everyone else must then set boundaries around her problems. Now, this is going to be very controversial because it's like, oh, you're being uncompassionate or you're being cruel or mean or what. Well, it's like, no, we're actually we know within ourselves that we've done everything that we can. Mm -hmm. But these problems are contagious. And so we mm-hmm. now need to protect ourselves from that. And, and unfortunately, it's not fair, but it is real that your son is going to have to lead the way on the boundaries that are actually going to matter. Mm-hmm. Right? And so it, it sounds like, wife, if you refuse to get help, I'm going to refuse to listen to the problem. Mm-hmm. You can complain. You just can't complain to me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, that's a mean, cruel husband. It's like, no, I, I've done everything that I can. I can't sit idly by and watch you continue to self-destruct. Right. He he has said some of that. And oh, hold on, hold on. Um, but it's not yeah, just saying it. Saying yeah. it, saying it is not the thing. Doing it, that's the thing. Over and over and over and over again. Carol, do they have kids together? They do. They have a toddler, and that was, yeah, that's another question I have. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got the break coming up. So, here, so yeah, we'll... so you've got a grandchild that needs to be protected, and at her age, you know, there are a lot of years, healthy years ahead, but the longer she waits the more difficult it is to break out of the patterns that she's into. And there's just no excuse for somebody listing all of those different dilemmas and problems not getting professional help. For 
most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Chris Williams on coaching. Oftentimes I get asked, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? The biggest difference between the two is that a therapist is going to be looking for a diagnosable mental health condition, whereas a coach is going to look at a particular issue and help a person work through that. If you need a coach, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. If you're looking at an issue in your life that you just kind of want to change, whether it be your weight or leadership or other areas of behavioral patterns, check out coaching. There can be some really, really helpful things for you. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 and talk to us about getting a new life coach. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. And, you know, Jim Burns wrote a book, Doing Life with Our Adult Children. I'll send a copy of that to you, Carol. But this is an example of our adult children having problems and needing, needing our wisdom. So, mm-hmm. Mark, Chris, what do you, what do you think is her best next step here? to get help Mm -hmm. for the daughter-in-law, which is the mother of her granddaughter. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I think for you, Carol, is is really kind of to be the backbone behind your son. Because I I, I don't think you want to then become the focus of the problem by you telling her what to do, and then now all of a sudden she's mad at at you, and she wants her son, uh, your son to align with her to be mad at you. Right. Right? I think... you know, sometimes it's adaptive for people to have problems that can't be cured. Uh, and and mm-hmm. it's adaptive because then they don't have to face them or mm-hmm. fix them, right? And this is kind of, you know, where she's at here. She's got all of this stuff, but of course, you know, she's fearful of having to face them, right? But fear mm-hmm. fear is not taken away or solved. Fear is overcome, right? Mm-hmm. And the only way we overcome fear is by facing it. And so I, I agree with Chris here is, is your son really needs to kind of start to kind of incrementally take boundaries and it may start with him saying you know i can't listen to this anymore not because i don't love you but because you're not choosing to take a path to cut to to recover from this and so i just feel Mm -hmm. stuck here and so that's what i would say is 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 be the backbone behind him help keep encouraging him because he's probably feeling uh, helpless and hopeless Mm -hmm. too but he might have to start to take some incremental boundaries to, to see how he can get her to face this and, and go see someone. Mm-hmm. So if she was afraid of flying mm-hmm. and she was the one flying the airplane, I'd be afraid if I were her also. But right. when you're afraid of flying, one of the things you learn to do is meet the pilot, hear him talk about his training, you get the sense that he's a lot more experienced in keeping a plane in the air than your worry is. And then you kind of surrender to this pilot's ability and power and, and uh, competency. And then you can relax a little bit or at least get through the flight. Now, mm-hmm. she has a mental problem or two. 
and she's trying right. to fly her own plane and she's never been trained like Chris is pointing out. She's not been trained to fly through these mm-hmm. problems. She's going to crash. Well, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the, the clinician, even the MD, these are the pilots that know this stuff that can get her through it. And somebody has to tell her to let them fly her plane. She right. has to allow them to do what they know how to do better than she does. Otherwise, yes, uh, what you're doing is you're creating this state we call learned helplessness. Mm, mm-hmm. And you don't want that anymore because that's, that's essentially what she's doing. She's piling up problem upon problem to mm-hmm. prove that she's helpless mm-hmm. and somebody's letting her add problem on top of problem and not ever let somebody that's trained to deal with it deal with it. So I'm going to encourage you to encourage your son to get serious here. Maybe it's he gets serious by there's a doctor's visit to the pediatrician for the toddler, Mm. and he calls Mm. the pediatrician ahead of time and says, here's my concern with my wife and the mother. Can you Mm. help me get her help? Or... She has to have medical care. He calls the physician before the appointment and says, "We need you need to know something, and I need your help to get her the help that she needs. Mm-hmm. But passivity does not solve this. Hoping that she gets better doesn't solve it. Mm-hmm. Listening to her complain doesn't solve it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I wish that your son had been the one to call, that he'd been so concerned he would have called. Right. He's, he's actually teaching full-time and um, in, in a high school, so he's, he doesn't okay. have that capacity. However, right. he is reaching out. Um, he he, he re- really wants to protect his wife's privacy um, and, and support her and guide her sure but carol carol her. carol ha- have him listen to yeah. this have him listen to this program okay have him listen to our That's voices a... okay and Good and idea. her privacy if her privacy kills her then it wasn't mm-hmm. a good thing to protect it was it uh, right i agree 100 okay. percent. so so you want to say to him if she's privately slitting her wrist protecting mm-hmm. her privacy isn't as important as getting her to the emergency room to have the wrist sewn up. Absolutely. So you can really yeah. help him see it from a different way because he's, he's kind of bought into this and it's easy, easy to get sucked into the learned helplessness there. And I hope something that we've said is helpful to you. I want you to hold on. I really, really think we can connect you with a counselor that could help him and her both and um boy I, i'm i'm so sorry you're having to go through this i'll send you healing as a choice and take your life back both hope that those will be helpful to him and to her all right let's uh, how about we go over here and talk with uh, faith from pittsburgh pennsylvania hi faith welcome to new life live how can we help is Faith there? No, oh, Faith, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. How could we help my you? Call. Yeah, sure. How could uh, we help? Uh, my granddaughter uh, is uh, suffering from uh, drug addiction, okay. and uh, and she, I'll preface it with, she has been uh, in a problem for herself as well as uh, those who love her. Uh, she started with bulimia. And then mm-hmm. she started with cutting herself, and uh, that's when her parents, uh, who also have been addicted throughout, off and on throughout their lives, with alcohol and drugs, um, that's when they sought help because they can afford to do so. 
Yeah. And uh, she was in counseling, and she was uh, seeing doctors, and she was on medication because supposedly she too has bipolar because her mother has bipolar. But you say but, she's an, an addict. What's she addicted to? Well, uh, she was addicted to. She's now uh, addicted. She was uh, on taking opioids, and she was also close to being on um, heroin. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know how how severe that was. My son felt as though she was on the verge of it. I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that she now is on methadone. She's been in and out of trouble with. Uh, uh, having accidents and the police have stopped yeah. her with finding medication in the car and okay. one thing and another. What's the question so I, for I'm us? Yeah. Uh, my question to you is having been a big part of her life and when she was young uh, I tried to instruct her with uh, spiritual and uh, positive feed feedback uh -huh. in life yeah. and she it, she liked that, and she hasn't had that in her life. How can I maintain a relationship with her, be helpful with her, yeah. uh, knowing what I know and knowing that her at 20, almost 25 years of age, living with a young man who also has addiction, uh, but in fact she met him at the methadone clinic, um, and they're living in his parents' basement. And it's constantly he kicks her out, so, and then she comes back. So, Faith, the question is, how can you how can you support her, or how can you how maintain? Can I, really? How can I how can I maintain some sort of sensibility for her? Okay, so hold on. Her. Let me yeah, yeah, let me jump in. This is a tough answer. You okay. you cannot. Okay. There is no sensibility in what she is experiencing right now. Yeah. And so. Sure. There is this first principle of, of addiction. It's called powerlessness. And, and you're talking about a history here, bulimia, cutting. Like she has an internal world that is fundamentally out of control. And, and you've been fantastic with encouraging her and giving her positive light in her life. But you also have to recognize the incredible limitation that that has for her to make the significant changes that she has to make. So we're mm -hmm. going to go to a break right now. We're going to talk a little bit more about the very significant changes she would have to make for her to get better. You're listening to New Life Live, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need some help, we want to help you. We really do. We all face days where life throws us a curveball and our routines or plans get disrupted. Things we wanted to do are forced to take a backseat to the unexpected demands of the day. If you normally listen to New Life Live on a radio station, well, you might not be able to that day. And on these hectic days when you're feeling stressed or frazzled, hearing the sound of counsel given on New Life Live is just what you need to navigate the unexpected things of life. Every time I'm troubled or I have a problem, I'll cut on new life. And there's always, always something that is said that is helpful to me. By listening, I have learned more than I can ever express about how God wants me to live. Download the New Life app for the easiest way to listen wherever you are and at a time that's convenient for you. Or watch the show on our YouTube channel. You can even subscribe to our podcast from your favorite podcast provider. You never have to miss a day of new life. Wherever you are, we are. I was sort of vaguely familiar that the 12 steps had some origination in the Bible. I found life recovery. And one of the things I liked so much was that it had such a broad appeal. It wasn't limited to just alcohol or drugs, that it was addressing a, a wide range of problems. At New Life, we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country. They take place online, in conference calls, and in person. And if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. We have startup materials, leader's guides, CDs, Bibles, and more, all with discounts available for groups. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. The 12 Steps have long been a great help to people in recovery because much of the 12 Steps power 
comes from the fact that they capture principles clearly revealed in the Bible. The 12 steps is really a pattern for all of us as Christians. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. We're talking with Faith about a granddaughter and what a, what a powerful role Faith can have here. And nobody else seems to be doing anything powerful about it. Chris, uh, continue there, what you were talking about. Yeah, so Faith, your, your granddaughter is, again, carrying a very, very significant problem. And it's medical in nature, even though it shows up as deeply emotional and, and also behaviorally. And so what she really, really needs, what she desperately needs, is strong, strong treatment to, to treat the addiction and all of the emotional pain, struggle, and what we call dysregulation going on inside of her. I mean, she's really in need of an inpatient treatment. And we were talking at the break, and, and Steve was mentioning this. So I love what you say. I'm going to steal it, Steve. He said, okay. methadone is methadon't. And so <laughs> that, that's a great Steve Arterburn-ism right there. And methadone, too, agree. because it isn't treatment. It's it not. Isn't, it, you don't it, get better. It, it's another drug. It's supplanting one drug yeah. for another, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I, I think just exploring what are the treatment options in the area for her and, and encouraging her along the way, though, Faith, this is really, really difficult for you because you're dealing with a life-threatening situation in, in the family at large, mm -hmm. but specifically in this granddaughter you love so, so dearly. And so you getting care and support, so going to something like Al-Anon or a, fa um, a family support for those family members of addiction, I think is really important. Faith, does your granddaughter live near you? Uh, yes, she does. And I did take her to one meeting uh, that is Christian-oriented uh, when she did a little bit of a break, when I had mm. some sway with her over the early summer months. She went one time, and she was turned off by uh, the, um, I guess, they didn't accept her uh, mm -hmm. story, so to speak. Uh, they, she was blaming everyone else for her well, problems. But then that wasn't and a very natural. good group, because if it was a good group, they would see that blaming everybody else is kind of a normal, natural thing in the beginning, and then they'd want to help her no longer blame other people, you know, versus shame I her agree. out of doing what she just naturally did. Is it is it possible? Because I heard you say here, Faith, that she lives with her boyfriend right now, and that's not a good relationship, and he threatens to in kick the her basement, out. All the, in right, the basement. He threatens of to her kick her out all the time. Out. Is it possible for her to come live with you temporarily while she gets treatment? No, unfortunately, it's not, because I live in a senior community mm. where that is not permitted. Mm -hmm. And uh, she could live at her mother and dad's, but she keeps going back and forth to this situation with the boyfriend that and, she met. Yeah, and that's, that's why she needs an inpatient treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I so agree. And let we, us, we let us try to help it. you find the resources in that area. And the first resource might be a bridge to treatment. It might be a great female counselor that is really good with addiction. Let us try to help you with that. And I'm going to send you a life recovery Bible and a workbook. Maybe you can go over that with her. And um, you, you, it sounds like to me you're the best thing going for her. And I just would encourage you to persevere. Don't give up. But Work with her parents and, and get them to see that something better needs to happen for her, and the sooner, the better. All right. I do have, I want to go to Ann, final caller here. Don't have a lot of time, but I want to get to your call, Ann, from Seattle. Uh, how can we help today? Yes, thank you. I'm 84 years old. I'm going to ask a quick question and then just listen. Okay. I feel I've been an avoider throughout my life okay and i heard that it also can be taken on by your children 
Yeah. Uh, and um, I feel that may have happened. So what can I do to uh, work on this situation? Uh, I thought of coaching, and I thought of perhaps there's groups to go into. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the coaching's a good idea. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I love that you're asking this question and that you've discovered this, and, and you're right. Um, there's a strong likelihood that our, our children take on our attachment style, right, because that's how we've bonded with them, and so they learn to bond with us that way. And so um, I think for you is discovering more, and I don't think you're too old to do this, discover more about your avoidant attachment style and where that came from from your parents, right? Make sense of make sense of that for yourself and then go to your kids and then make sense of that for them. Tell them, I've discovered this about myself and I think I may have passed this on to you and these are the ways that I think I've passed this on to you. What do you think? And and then the other thing is you treat every day like it's opposites day. An avoider doesn't want to join a group, but you go join a women's Bible study or you Find a life recovery group to recover from avoidance. And there's just no other way to get over being avoidant than to push through it. I'm the same way. You know, I, I, well, I've done these campouts with men. The last thing I want to do before I go is go do a campout with a bunch of men. <laughs> and then once I get to the campout, it's one of the greatest things ever. Mm -hmm. But my tendency as an avoider, as I, I call it an avoidilator, um, is not to do that. But once I do it, I force myself to do it, it's wonderful. I think you'll find the same thing, especially if you're open with the women that you join. Tell them you're uneasy. I think they're going to show you some compassion and try to gently bring you into the group. Chris, Mark, what are you, what's your suggestion for Anne as an avoider? I think that that's a great suggestion is find the, the groups in your area and join them. And, and, and there's one other thing I would just recommend is like this isn't always the case, but it is often the case. An avoider is avoiding something in themselves by avoiding other people. It, it's usually a fear, well, yeah. a fear of rejection, mm -hmm. a fear right. of... Um, judgment, that that rejection and judgment are what other people, what I'm going to experience in relationship. And so I think exploring that, that th those stories that we tell about ourselves came from somewhere. And and here's the tricky thing, though, because avoiders are avoidant, they tend not to notice their emotions. <laughs> and true. so yes, when you yeah. do suggest that to them, uh, if you suggest that to your kids, they may say no. Yeah. And it's because they're not really noticing what, mm -hmm. you know, right. what they're feeling. Yeah. But the key insight here is that we're not really avoiding people. Mm -hmm. We're avoiding what people do or what mm -hmm. we think they're going to do. Yes. Criticize, mm -hmm. reject, uh, judge, whatever. So you have to move toward it. Just like any kind of fear that you overcome. If you're afraid of elevators, you never get over that until you get on an elevator. But you have to do some things to get ready to get on the elevator. And here, telling you, a real live group of Christian women, they're going to make you feel better about being there. And, I, and, I, yeah, go ahead. and I'm just going to throw in one other thing. I'm going to take a Markism. Mark said earlier in the show today to Carol, fear isn't taken away or it doesn't disappear. Fear is overcome. And, yeah. and I think that that's a ton of wisdom that Mark I, shared there. Yeah. That's a, a Markism, not Marxism. It's a <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't confuse it with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're glad, very glad. And, and by the way, I'm going to send you a, a copy of Take Your Life Back. It's got it right there, some of the key steps to do that. Thank you, Chris and Mark. Thanks to all of you who support us. Happy day after Christmas. And I hope and pray your exchanges go well. If you can help us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, newlife.com. We really need your year-end gift if you possibly can. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Thanks for watching today. We love helping people. I hope you sense that. And we know that there's always hope if you find the right resource. Now, if something we've said that somebody else applies to you, that's fantastic. That's what we're hoping for. But also, if you want to join us directly, you can call 1-800-229-3000 between 1 and 3 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the best times to get through. And while you're here on YouTube, Check out these other videos that we've done to help people see where they could grow or a different path to take. And if you do that, would you give us a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to this channel. There are many ways that we can help you outside of the radio program, and it's very hard for some to pick up a phone and dial 1-800-NEW-LIFE, but when you do, we put you in touch with somebody who cares about you, knows all the resources out there, and they're going to find the best for you. There is no reason to struggle alone. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you'll invite somebody else to come and join that maybe needs just a little bit of help along the way. I'll see you next time.